Welcome to this special broadcast exploring DRM technology. I'm Scott Hollinger. We're here to share how KTWR is going to change the way you listen to shortwave radio. Our new transmitters use digital radio Mondial technology, or DRM for short. DRM provides a strong, clear signal so you can enjoy the broadcast of KTWR. Hi friends and fellow DXs, this is your favorite DX program, DXs Daily, and I'm your friend and host Sharan Kumar Narsimhan from Chennai in India. This 5 minute weekly DX program is broadcast every Sunday in 13690 kHz DRM mode from 1500 hours coordinated universal time in 11965 kHz on Wednesdays from 1101 hours UTC and in Fridays on 17700 kHz from 1431 hours UTC. The sunspot number this week is 133. SFI forecast ranges from 160 to 170. And the A index ranges from 8 to 12. The next section that we would be listening in this show will be a history of radio station section. This week, we have the history of radio broadcasting, the South American country of Suriname. The radio Appentine officially came on the air on August 2, 1958. Mr. Charles Verywood Sr. and his son Eddie decided to incorporate Radio Appentine. Charles Verywood Sr. and his son rented a transmitter from the former LTT Lance Telegraph N Telephone DS, now called Telesur Telecommunication Company Suriname. The trading company CE Beverett itself took care of the financing of the radio station. Four studios were housed in that building on Doministat. One for broadcasting, one for live programs, one for reading the news, and one for radio plays, quizzes, and orchestras. A control room was built from which all stereos were connected and could be operated. Finally, the time had come for the radio to go on air. All those who owned a radio tuned into the 355 meters, the medium wave, and that was almost the entire Surinamese population. Heard the Surinamese national anthem coming from loudspeakers on Saturday evening, August the 2nd, 1958, the half past six. After which, Mr. Eddie Beverett played the picture, silver threads between the gold for his mother. After this, the Minister of Education introduced the official coming on air of Radio Appenti with a speech in which he wondered with some concern whether a third broadcaster in Parambiro was not too much of a good thing. Before Appen Radio Appentin came on air, Parambiro already had two radio stations, Paramarabiro and Avros. In 1964, the broadcasting license of the Avros was revoked. From its foundation until the 1990s, Radio Appenti had a discote of more than 14,000 singles and an almost equal number of long-playing gramophone records. Radio Appenti introduced the FM stereo radio in the country. For more information about Radio Appenti, you can visit the website www.apintie.sr. Next in the news from radio station section, we have some sad news from the radio station and the transmitter site colon.bog about the long wave radio station. Nowadays, as you know, long wave radio stations have become a thing of the past. Colon Bog 243 kilohertz will be closing down at the end of 2023 on December 31st. It has been in use since August 29th, 1927 on 243 kilohertz long wave with a power of 300 kilowatts. Medium wave broadcasts of DRP2 commenced on 1062 kilohertz medium wave with 250 kilowatts power. Besides these two transmitters, there is also a common reserve transmitter. On 15 February 2007, at 0005 hours UTC, long wave transmissions from Kalando Bog were suspended after 80 years of service. Long wave transmissions were resumed in DRM at reduced power of 0.2 kilowatts on 3rd October 2008 
we have come to the end of the program now thanks for listening to the show and do not forget to send your results and reports and bank scans to dxsdiary at gmail.com until next week this is your friend and host arukumar nasiman signing off 73 bye bye